Jefferson, uh, and then uh, we'll circle back at the end if people have more than that. Uh, we'll get started with uh, Brent Axe. Hey, Brett, thanks for doing this today. Uh, no just kind of wondering, you know, you're kind of in that weird in between where you want to put Army behind you and, and focus on Virginia, but what were some of those adjustments you looked at uh, after uh, Army and, you know, what would uh, seem to be a disappointing performance overall defensively? Yeah, good question. Um, I think, honestly, you know, when we looked at film the next day, it wasn't honestly too much. It was like a lot of basic stuff. You know, we were getting out hustled. We won the ground ball ball battle. I don't really know how. It felt like they were sort of working us on that. Um, a lot of just like lazy off ball stuff. So these past couple of days of practice have been good intensity. Uh, you know, we know what we have to fix and we do want to put it past us. But, you know, at the same time, we knew we had to look at it to see what we had to fix. And, you know, we're excited to get another chance five days later. And just a quick follow up to that. What is it about Virginia every year? You too. Just yeah. Back and forth, close games, you, you can count on it. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, obviously, they're a great team, won the championship. I think they're still defending. Um, you know, pretty similar play styles. You know, both of us want to get up and down the field. Both teams have great athletes, you know, great goalies, great faceoff guys. So it's pretty – when you, like, look at it on paper, it's like we're pretty similar. So it should be a lot of fun on Saturday. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Brent. Thanks, Brent. Next, we'll go to Andrew Crane. Uh, hey, Brett, hope everything's going well. Um, uh, I was well. just kind of curious uh, what this offseason was like for you. I mean, you, you kind of had your first five games last season as a close defender. So what did you kind of focus on this offseason, you know, now that you could focus on on close heading into this year? Were you working out with Sean at all back home or just kind of, you know, with Jack and Thomas? Like, what were uh, you doing? Yeah, you know, honestly, I'm from Jersey. So we were definitely like New York, one of the more locked down areas in the country. So all, a lot of the gyms were closed for a while. So me and my brother actually went on like Facebook marketplace where we were able to have a makeshift get a gym put together in the garage. Um, so me and him would work out together all summer. And then we were, we were able to get down to the local field. We do some like footwork, work on close defense drills and stuff like that. And then this fall, obviously we were back here, but over winter break, the gyms were open, but I just decided to stay back at the garage again, which was nice and just like sort of stay away from people just to get ready to get back to campus. So what did this makeshift gym kind of look like? Did you really like start from scratch? Like what did it kind of look yeah. like? Yeah, uh, it was it was originally like my mom's storage unit. So she wasn't too happy with me when I started cleaning everything out. Um, but we had like everything we needed. And then my uncle had some like Smith machines that he was able to put in the garage. So it came together somewhat nice. Great. Thanks, Rip. Cool. Thanks, Andrew. Next we have Trey Redfield. Hey, Brett, thanks for taking the time. Um, on Sunday against Army West Point, Brendan Nickturn was, was insane. Um, mm -hmm. he, he, was, he, was dom he looked very dominant on, the, um, on you guys' defensive front. This Saturday, it's Peyton Cormier, and he's, he's, he is an absolute dog. We all know that. Um, can, can score on all parts of the field. What do you guys have to do this weekend to take down um, Cormier and the rest of uh, a UVA team? He's such a great rivalry. Well, thanks, right. That was a good question. Um, Honestly, I think on Sunday, you know, part of our regroup on Monday, we agreed that we were sort of too selfish. Everyone was worrying about their matchups too much. And obviously, Brendan Nick turns an unbelievable player, as we've seen. Um, and when you sort of look at Virginia, there's like a bunch of him. You know, every single one top to bottom is a great player. So everyone's on the same page. You know, we need to play a lot faster, a lot more aggressive. And we need to play as a team defense more and just be ready to sort of fly around and be willing to help each other out a lot more. And just to follow up on that, on Saturday, it's going to be 684 days since you guys um, played against Carolina in the ACC tournament. Last ACC opponent, what does it mean to have to go up against someone in your conference once again? Yeah, it's always pretty cool, and it's crazy to think it's been that long. I honestly had no clue, so thanks for that. But um, they're always, you know, the most competitive games we have all year. You know, big, fast, strong athletes, so they're always a lot of fun. And, you know, I think all the guys are pumped to get back after after a disappointing Sunday. Thank you, Brett. Thank you. Brett. Great. Thank, you. Thank you. Next, go to Mark Larson. Hey, Brett. Uh, Coach Desco said uh, yesterday that you guys listen a lot better after a loss than after a win. Now, what is he uh, – what's his message this week uh, to you guys? What is he talking about? Well, I think it's just plain and simple. You know, obviously – 
the way we came out on Sunday. You know, we had a good first quarter, and then beyond that, you know, honestly, we were terrible. We were slow, couldn't really catch ball, turned it over, played bad day. I think everyone knows that's not sort of the expectations we have here, and everyone knows that when we got back to practice on Monday, it was back to work, you know, put our head down, and, you know, uh, I think everyone on the team responded well to all the coaching and everything they had to say, and I think they have a pretty good game plan going forward, and I think everyone's eager to get there on Saturday. What kind of a what kind of a blow to the ego uh, was Sunday? Uh, are you guys able to you know steady yourselves, or it had to be? Yeah, I think uh, honestly, I mean, like I think that's more of um, like the news outlet saying that. I think everyone understood that last year was sort of last year's thing, and everyone dropped it, you know, when the new season started. Um, so obviously, we don't really think about that too much. But obviously, Sunday was a very humbling experience, I would say. And everyone realizes we have a lot of work to do if we want to get to where we want to go. Thanks, Brett. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Next, we'll go back to Andrew Crane. Brett, Army's coach was, was saying on Sunday that you guys were, were biting pretty hard in the picks and, like, playing those really aggressive, and that allowed them to kind of slip back and get kind of the switches off of you or, like, get you on mm-hmm. another guy. How do you guys kind of adjust to that, like, in-game? And what are some of the drills you might do in practice during the week to, to kind of avoid, you know, kind of the same thing happening against UVA? Cool. Yeah. So I guess drills we do in practice, you know, a lot of one-on-ones, we do a lot of pick drills every day. And then, you know, we've talked about it. We can either guard it, like we can either fight through those picks, but we can switch the picks. We can play sides. So obviously it's going to change week to week, but this week, um, you know, we have a game plan put in place on how we're going to guard those. Was that something you noticed kind of happening on, on Sunday? Was- yeah. Just kind of bite. Sorry. Of <laughs> no, no, you're good. That was, my, was that something that you noticed too, for on off. Sunday? Yeah, definitely. I think everyone knew right away that the way we played off ball, the way we handled all those slips and cuts that um, obviously it was terrible and it was unacceptable. So we got back to fixing that right away. Thank you. Thanks for the arrow. Uh, just follow up on that. Um, is that just mostly communication, I guess? Because it seemed like a couple of times, like the, the help would come, the slide would come, and you guys would double, mm-hmm. but then nobody would recover to the other guy, too. So, I, like, I wasn't sure if it was just kind of a communication thing. It's definitely a big communication thing. Uh, honestly, also, I know it's obviously not an excuse. You know, we're early on, so we're, we're working through those uh, kinks, but I think we're, we're able to fix that pretty quick this week, and we know what we have to do. Thank you. Next, we'll go back to Mark. Hey, Brad, just, just wondering how uh... – what Drake's message has been to you guys. Uh, was he uh, was he pretty incensed uh, Sunday uh, with the way things were going? I mean, a lot of shots were right on top of him. Uh, what, what what is he saying to to his uh, you know defenseman? Yeah, obviously, you know, he's the one commanding our defense, and he. I mean, we let him know. You know, we let him down. You can only rely on that so much until the guy's one yard away from the goal. So you know nothing's on him it's on us you know we got to play better we got to give up the outside shots and not give up the crease dunks thank you, thank you. next we'll go to Lindsay. hey how you doing hey so one one of the many things noticeable about the other day you know with no fans in the stands it was, it was the first cross game with with no fans you know there'd be a score a big goal and normally there'd be a roar and now you could just basically hear the players on the field celebrating i mean they're just it's just yeah. striking. I, I was curious, you know, as a player, um, although you you know you weren't in any of those celebrations, uh, what was it like to sort of have moments where there should have been a reaction for the crowd normally and there wasn't? Yeah, honestly, so during warm-ups, it was fine because, you know, the music was going and stuff. And during the game, I think it was to the point where we were all so dialed in that it's like, yes, it was sort of empty in a way, but I think the sideline still brought good noise and good energy, so it still felt normal, you know? It didn't feel like that off. Really? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it was fine. It was definitely like, I guess like in timeouts or something, like you look around, there's no one there though. Yeah. Well, on a related, you know, celebration question, uh, Ian uh, Laviano from uh, Virginia had a conference call yesterday. He was talking about his goal celebrations. He likes to sometimes do the NFL players type of, uh, you know, stage kind of take a picture or yeah or, so you may have seen some of these reactions so I, yeah. I, I didn't know what the etiquette was in lacrosse whether if you score you just do what you want or whether that some players might feel like celebrate but not too much so I, I don't know if you're familiar with his celebrations but what, yeah the defender what's your general philosophy about that from the other team <laughs> you 
Oh, uh, when you see the other team go to you, you know, it obviously pisses you off. You know, you just got scored on. You like obviously you want that to stop right away. Um, and Ian's defense, obviously, you know, he's a pretty big spark plug for that team. And, you know, he's a big energy guy. So a lot of teams feed off of that. You know, he's great for their team and everything they do. But, <laughs> but we can't let that happen to us. No. We can't let him celebrate. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. We have time for one or two more if anybody's got them. If not, uh, we'll let no, – Andrew, I see you popping back in here. You can go right ahead. Right, I was just curious if it's helpful having the common opponent with, you know, UVA having played Army. You just you guys just come off, you know, the game against Army. Is that helpful, you know, given the limited practice time when you have the common opponent to, to kind of break down or, or not really because of different oh, personnel? I would definitely say it helps, you know, because for the past week or two leading up to Army, we were watching, you know, Army and UVA film. So we were able to see both teams. Uh, and then on the other hand, you know, we play UVA every year, just like we play Army every year. So like we sort of know their players, you know, know their offense, know what they're doing. So I would say it's definitely like a mix. Great. Thank you. Anybody else got anything? Uh, we got time for one more. If not, we'll let Brett hop off. I got class two to eight. Not looking forward to that. Uh, sorry, Brett. Got to go to class. <laughs> this is way, this is, this is a lot better than that. <laughs> Thanks, Brett. Thanks for hopping on with us. No, 